What if I told you that there was a way to make you learn faster? A quick, inexpensive thinking cap of sorts that could help you just take in information by osmosis. What if I told you that the only price to pay for this was feeling a little tingling sensation on your scalp? You'd probably think that it's too good to be true, right? Well, today I'm going to teach you about something called transcranial direct current stimulation. A process of running electric current through your brain that claims to treat things like depression, anxiety, Parkinson's, chronic pain, and just leads to cognitive improvement in general. Welcome back to NeuroPsyQ, the best place on YouTube to increase your neuroscience IQ. If you want to learn whether or not it's possible to enhance your cognition so that you can learn faster, sit tight, stay tuned, let's roll the intro. While Dr. Frankenstein might not exist, it seems that some of his methods made it from fiction to reality. Transcranial direct current stimulation or TDCS is a non-invasive brain stimulation technique where electrodes are placed on the surface of your scalp to cause excitation or inhibition of different areas. It's said that this process can decrease the time it takes people to learn a task and increase their retention of information. In fact, it has actually been used by the military for decades to help train fighter pilots. So, if it's used by the military, it must be fine for anyone, right? Wrong! This actually isn't FDA approved yet. And while it's used by many doctors, including Dr. Salnick at the John Hopkins University, to treat patients with various ailments, a lot of the research supporting TDCS hasn't implemented credible testing conditions such as a control group or proper blinding, and they have yet to be replicated. This leaves a big gray area as to whether or not there's some sort of placebo effect occurring. Which brings me back to this show I used to watch as a kid, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, where one of the characters was given a lipstick and she was told the lipstick would make her smarter. And then, what do you know? All of a sudden she started doing better in school. Classic placebo effect. Either way, despite the controversy, people across across the world that have caught wind of the promise that TDCS holds are actually turning to creating their own DIY stimulators with a battery, some wires, and a couple of sponges. Some less crafty individuals even make their way over to Amazon where they can purchase a TDCS stimulator for around $200 in hopes of making their learning easier. It boggles my mind to see the lengths people are willing to go to just to make learning easier. I myself am not sure I'd ever be willing to electrocute my brain, you know, for fear of maybe frying it. Well, I certainly wouldn't suggest you try this at home. The fact is that people, especially college students, have been turning to quick, easy solutions to help them fare well on midterms and maintain a good GPA. Things like modafinil and methylphenidate, which are usually used to treat narcolepsy and ADHD, are already commonly misused by college students that are stressed out. So the fact that some people are willing to experiment with TDCS does not really surprise me. Lots of students are quick to turn to a fast solution and neglect other more proven solutions like sleep, hydration, a healthy vitamin rich diet, and physical activity. Nonetheless, there is still evidence suggesting that TDCS can improve long-term memory, fluid reasoning, positive mood, and learning of complex tasks, with minimal side effects including headaches, mild burns, skin irritation, hyper or hypomania, and sometimes it can induce unwanted changes. Despite the fact that TDCS is still being experimented with and it does not yet have proper safety protocol and dosage principles, let's talk about what it does to the brain. First of all, TDCS apparatus contains electrolytes soaked in saline solution that are attached to the patient's skull. They're placed in different locations depending on the brain region that the experimenter wants to manipulate. So around 1 to 2 milliamps of current are sent through the patient's brain 
And if you know a little bit about batteries, you know that there's a cathode and an anode, or a positive and a negative end. In TDCS, the anode actually excites the brain and causes an increase in activity below it. The cathode does the exact opposite. It inhibits the brain and leads to reduced activity. So this current being run through the brain creates an electrical field that alters the membrane potential of the neurons within the brain. What does this mean? Well, the brain is a highly complex amalgamation of cells that communicate with each other using electrochemical signals. And there's something called an action potential, which in short is this way that neurons communicate with one another. It's this whole repetitive process that neurons go through to send signals to one another across synapses. I actually have a whole video on action potentials explaining how they happen and it goes quite thoroughly through the process. So if you want to check out that video, I suggest you do so. It's going to pop up right here or it should pop up right there. If it's not in the corner of the screen, it might also be found in the description below. Anyway. Our neurons all have these typical resting membrane potentials that are around negative 70 millivolts. So this is because there are different concentrations of charges inside the cell compared to outside of the cell. To trigger an action potential, the charge has to be brought up to negative 50 millivolts and then boom, this all or nothing signal gets sent from one neuron to the other neuron. With TDCS, the electric potential of the membrane is altered which can mean it's more negative, making it harder to trigger an action potential, or more positive, which would make it easier to trigger an action potential. However, it's not that simple. Depending on the direction of the current relative to the neuron, or the membrane of the neuron, the excitability can be altered in different ways. Nonetheless, TDCS was actually explored in crayfish, an animal which has had its nervous system studied quite extensively, and it was seen that stimulation does in fact influence action potential timing. Now this brings me to the topic of long-term potentiation, or LTP. This is the process by which we establish new networks in the brain and in fact learn. Nerves that fire together, wire together, and all that jazz. In order for LTP to happen, we need high frequency stimulation of synapses, so the connection between two neurons. That leads to epigenetic effects that strengthen the synapse. The whole process could definitely have its own video, but regardless, with TDCS, we increase firing, which can elicit LTP. This is probably why studies have shown that its effects of learning are only beneficial when the stimulation is delivered during studying rather than testing. It's quite possible that TDCS is helping with the formation of new neural networks. Now, before we finish up, I'd like to use this last little bit of time to look at a study that showed how TDCS can help promote insight in study participants. These participants were asked to complete the number reduction task, which follows three rules. The only numbers used are one, four, nine. If there are two of the same numbers in a row, for example, one and one, the next number is one. If there are two different numbers, for example, one followed by nine, the next number is the only one that hasn't appeared yet, in this case, four. However, there is a simpler way to complete each task. The numbers at the end mirror each other. So if the first answers were one, nine, four, the next answers would be four, nine, one. When a patient comes to this insight, it helps them get the answers faster. Furthermore, the insight seems to be promoted by anodal or excitatory stimulation of the left posterior parietal cortex. The left posterior parietal cortex is an area important for executive control, and it's also important for the default mode network, which we talked about in our meditation video. However, this insight only happens if the stimulation happens during the training period. So again, we see that this stimulation seems to be influencing the active process of learning. Now, that's only one of many studies. I've included many others in the description for your own reading. Now, we're going to finish up and discuss what the takeaway is. For me, the takeaway is that TDCS could actually be enhancing cognition. But the logistics behind why need to be further explored by doctors and scientists not by self-experimentation. 
it's no shock really, <laughs> no pun intended, that running electricity through the brain would have some sort of effect on us. Exploring these effects could prove beneficial for therapeutic reasons, but in terms of cognitive enhancement, there are all sorts of ethical issues that may arise. So, before I leave you today, I want you to comment whether or not you think that cognitive enhancement is ethical. Other than that, that's all for today. If you like this video, leave us a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so that you can know when we have future videos. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you next week on NeuroPsyQ. Or maybe right now. If you have nothing else better to do, maybe check out some of our other videos. Either way, see you soon. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe.